Okay, 안녕하세요. <laughs> it's great to be here. So I'm very excited. I love being in Korea. Korea is a true crypto kingdom. <laughs> uh, Korea is showing the world the passion for blockchain and crypto. So I'm, I'm excited. This is uh, one of the best crypto countries in the world. So today, I wanted to talk about our new foundation, which is the blockchain technology. So let's begin. <laughs> I know we're getting a bit of a late start this morning. Uh, I arrived last night from Tokyo, and as I was coming to my hotel, I was hearing lots of people yelling <laughs> and cheering. And of course, this is the excitement. So, congratulations. <laughs> Wonderful achievement, and of course, against Germany, which is, of course, world champion Germany. So, amazing team, wonderful performance. So, exciting to be here. Good timing. I just come from Japan, uh, speaking at the Tokyo Blockchain Conference, and um, I have an investment fund, venture fund in Japan. So, I'm investing now in global blockchain companies. So if you're interested, please approach me. I'm also doing business in Malta. So I'm developing an exchange in Malta. I know today there will be a conversation about centralized versus decentralized exchange. So I'm excited to participate in this conversation. I think it's an exciting topic. So let's begin here. Is this a good investment? Okay, I'm going to trick you. This is not a good investment. This is Lehman Brothers. Lehman Brothers is the largest bankruptcy in human history. Lehman Brothers was responsible for the collapse of the US economy and the global economy in September 15th of 2008. So Lehman Brothers is a terrible investment. Eight, six, 600 billion US dollars of balance sheet destroyed in about one day. So very difficult event. So what happened afterwards? So I'm going to show you what the balance sheet of the United States Federal Reserve Bank looks like after September 15, 2008. So you can see that this is trillions of dollars, trillion with a T. This is one trillion dollars, and now look at where we are. This is the new normal. And this is September 15, 2008. Since this day, the United States has printed 12.3 trillion US dollars, printing money. $10 trillion of negative yielding bonds. 
and 654 interest rate cuts. So this is a huge impact, and it is an impact that was not lost upon, upon some very important people. So, if you ask Bill Gates, will the United States suffer from another financial collapse? So Bill Gates says, yes, it is a certainty. So for sure, we will have a financial collapse. So I want you to imagine that we're standing in a high place. And I want you to imagine that we're standing on a thin metal rail. Now watch this foot. Watch the second foot. How much weight on this foot? Is it 1%? Is it 51%? Imagine that this thin rail is known to collapse. This place that we're standing together, we're all standing in this place. This is the current centralized fiat economy, which is known to collapse. How does this economy collapse? It collapses because of centralization. Centralization is not just a description. It's not just an adjective. It's a verb. Banks acquire other banks. Centralization is like gravity. It's a force of nature. And because banks get bigger and bigger and bigger, if you look at the United States in the Trump administration, half of the administration are bankers from Goldman Sachs. And what happens is that the risk, all of the profits are privatized profits and all of the losses are socialized losses because banks become too big to fail and then they fail. This system is not acceptable, which brings us to Satoshi Nakamoto. So, in October of 2008, one month after the collapse of Lehman Brothers, Satoshi Nakamoto published the Bitcoin white paper. One month later, in the Genesis block, it is written, the London Times headline, Second bank bailout. Check it for yourself. Satoshi Nakamoto understood that the financial system of today is subject to collapse and that the weakest point is centralization. So now we have a second metal beam but what is this beam made of? It's made of something new. Is the new material going to collapse? We don't know. We don't know. So what do we do? We test it. So we put weight on the new beam, maybe 1%, and then we take the weight off. Maybe we put next time 2%, and then we take the weight off. Each time we test the new support, we put more weight 
into the beam. The price of Bitcoin goes up, and then it goes down. And it goes up even higher, and then it goes down. And it goes up even higher. We are testing this new financial infrastructure. And what is the foundation? Why should we trust the new foundation? It isn't even blockchain. It is consensus. Consensus is the heart of the new financial infrastructure. In crypto, we use the term fiat to explain government money. What does the word fiat mean? Fiat means because I said so. The US dollar is worth one dollar because someone, because the United States government said so, because I said so. Why is a Bitcoin worth one Bitcoin? The difference is consensus. The reason one Bitcoin is worth one Bitcoin is because we said so. There's no single authority that tells anyone what Bitcoin is worth. And nobody is printing trillions of dollars of Bitcoin because they said so. I think that is the difference. The difference is consensus. Trillions of dollars of transaction history in Bitcoin and not one transaction that anyone on the planet can point to and say, that never happened. Nobody can point to a single transaction. This on an internet that's full of fake news is a new foundation that's based in the truth. I recommend that everybody read the book of Satoshi. It is a real book. It contains emails written by Satoshi, and you can understand the mindset of the designer of Bitcoin. It is amazing and very helpful because the designer was informed by something that I call open source money. So what is open source money? This is a visualization of the source code repository of Bitcoin. This is not some artist's animation. This is truly a visualization of every single source code check-in into Bitcoin. This first account, S Nakamoto, this one. He's working alone. He's just building this by himself. It's just one person. Oh wait, Gavin Andresen. Gavin Andresen has joined Satoshi Nakamoto. Now you have additional accounts. You have Hal Finney, and you have a third account. This, whoever this is in the green, right? Gavin is the one with the photo ID. He's his picture. Oh, sorry. Got to go back. So. The point that I'm making with this image is open source money is the revolution behind all of the cryptocurrency movement. And open source money will do to proprietary money what open source software did 
to proprietary software. I've been in Silicon Valley for the past 30 years, and I've watched open source software eating the entire software industry. What does this mean? The proprietary software industry is larger and more valuable than it has ever been in human history. And yet, it is completely built on top of open source software. If you look at the biggest giants in the world, if you look at Netflix, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google, 90% of their software is open source software. This is why we should believe that 90% of the value of our economy should become open source money. But this does not mean the end of proprietary money. Proprietary money, fiat money, government money, will be more valuable. The entire economy will be more valuable than it has ever been. Because we will have a more resilient global economy with both centralization and decentralization working together within a strong regulated environment with mass adoption of crypto wallets. So this is really where the future goes. And Bitcoin will eat all available money supply, starting with Bill Gates. <laughs> Just kidding. Bill Gates is fine. Don't worry about Bill Gates. <laughs> so what I wanted to share is I wanted to share a picture. I may need to uh, ask the folks in the back to give a click to this, to kick this off. But this is an animation. It's by a group called Elementus. Thank you very much. And it illustrates the current status of token sales. And so if you study token sales, what you begin to understand is that, you know, here's MasterCoin. That's Ethereum. Ethereum, 19 million US dollars. Of course, at that time, Ethereum was worth 14 cents. For people who are sad about the price of Ethereum at 400 USD, you have to remember it used to be 14 cents. Here comes the Dow, $168 million ICO, and also the formation of Ethereum Classic. So this is really one of the first challenges to immutability. Now you're in the 19, now you're in 2017, you're starting to see this phenomenon cooking. EOS is growing, Filecoin, Tezos, Telegram, and this crazy thing in the middle, Venezuelan Petro. I don't want to comment too much on this one, but there is a lot of diversity in this ecosystem. So just a quick note, which is that at the moment we're seeing a decline in crypto prices, right? This chart shows 23 billion US dollars going into ICO, right? How can we think about this? This is a talent grab. We're using this money to hire the smartest engineers in the world. They're all working together on open source money to solve all the problems. But today, we have two weak spots. 
The two weakest spots in the crypto economy are, first, we don't have enough wallets. We may have 50 million wallets. That's a small number of wallets. I think we need at least 10 times the number of wallets. We need at least 500 million wallets. The second weakness is you can only buy other cryptos with crypto. We have one of my advisory companies speaking today, Pundi X. They're hoping that you can buy a sandwich with crypto. You can buy a newspaper with crypto. You can buy a bag of rice with crypto. You can buy a bottle of water with crypto. We need to be able to do this because all the engineers that we're hiring with $23 billion of crypto are selling crypto. They're selling. So all of these $23 billion all selling into fiat all selling into USD in order to pay the rent, in order to pay utilities, in order to buy groceries, in order to feed their families. They're all selling cryptos. So all the money going to ICO is going back into fiat. This is going to produce a depressive effect. So the last thing I wanted to say is that all systems, not just centralized systems, are prone to collapse. It's like a big pile of sand. If you keep pouring more sand, it will keep collapsing, right? This is normal. Right now, crypto economy is experiencing some collapse. This is, again, it's normal. But in a way, the biggest thing we need to understand is that the crypto economy can actually be supportive and it can actually grow higher. Platform players, platforms like NEM, platforms like EOS, especially platforms like Ethereum, the platform players are going to be supportive and they're going to build the pile much higher and I think we all need to invest. So my last note is I'd like everyone in the room to really think about investment and not speculation. I want them to think about teams and not about hype. I don't think you should be caring what other investors think. I think you should care about what developers do. So I think that's my big message, because if we're successful, crypto will support the entire global economy, and the result will not be rich people getting richer and poor people getting poorer. If we are all successful, everyone will be richer. So I think that's my message. So let's all please focus on building and investing and not just fast money. Okay, thank you very much.